Hey folks, in this interview, I'm speaking to Christine Allward. She's a photographer based in Sacramento. We're gonna talk about photography, modeling, and business. Christine, welcome to This Week in Photo. How's it going? Great, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I am doing pretty good. I'm, uh, as you know, as part of this series, which is kind of a, a Sacramento creative series that I'm doing, I now live in Sacramento. I know. And, yeah, partially fantastic. thanks to you and your tireless, you know, ferrying me around all different parts of the, <laughs> the town. So thank you for that. Of course, I'm glad you found something. I'm glad it worked out. Uh, we're very happy to have you in Sacramento. I hope you're not melting. You moved in the summertime a little bit. So I moved. I hope you're okay here on the face of the sun. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it gets a little toasty out here. I moved, I think, probably on the, the worst day you could possibly move. And I have to move again next month, as you know. So it's, right. uh, yeah, that's, a, that's another story for another time. But it's... Yeah, I'm in t I'm living temporarily downtown until the place that I'm ultimately going to end up is finished, and then I get to move out there. So two moves in three months. <laughs> One guy, no, two moves, three months, no, boom. No, no, it's good. It's good. I'm enjoying this. And uh, part of what I wanted to do as part of TWIP or This Week in Photos relocation to the Sacramento area was kind of reach out and, and talk to a lot of the creatives in the area. And obviously you're one of them. So Well, thank you. We have a lot here. So I hope you're finding lots of people to talk to. Yeah, it's it's very surprising how vibrant and robust the, uh, the creative community is here. But before we dive into that, I want to talk about you. Sure. So this is all about you. This is your. Oh name. boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, photography, right? So I know you and I go back several years. You know, we've been you've been on this week in photo before, mm -hmm. and yep. you know, we, you, your husband, and I have hung out. All this stuff. So with in terms of your transition, so you were you went from model to photographer, and there was that overlap in there where you were a model and a photographer. Tell me about tell me about that that kind of the move into modeling and then ultimately into photography. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think to even go a step back, it goes photographer, model, photographer. Mm. I did, you know, photography in high school. That was when I first was introduced to it. Um, you know, did a lot of landscape stuff in Yosemite and had kept having jobs that were unfulfilling and I was doing the nine to five and the like cubicle that I hated thing. Um, so in trying to get out of that started going to photography meetup groups here in Sacramento, mm -hmm. which is what drew me into modeling going to those groups. A, there's never very many women, so they all start wanting to shoot the girl who showed up. Oh, um, you become the de facto model. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of turned into, wow, hey, I'm not that bad at this. I'm actually learning a lot about photography, being photographed, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that kind of took me away from photography in a weird way, and I started just modeling and doing Sec Fashion Week and, you know, getting getting paid to do that. And I got to a point where I had to decide what I really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and while I got a lot out of modeling and I really enjoyed it, it wasn't the long-term goal for me. Yeah. Um, so I kind of had to, I actually got approached by an agency and they were willing to sign me. And so that was kind of wow. the tipping point. Do I want to spend my time doing this or am I going to buckle down and work on my photography. And, and that's what I ultimately decided to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have that look and as, as the viewers can see, you know, I'll throw some of them in the, in the video in post-production, but in the blog post as well, you provided some images that kind of show your work mm -hmm. as well as, you know, what you, what your modeling prowess is. And you have that kind of, I don't know what, yeah, Tim Engel and I were talking about it. You have that kind of noir kind of I can't even put my finger on it. It's like a classic <laughs> look. It's like a classic look, right? It's the Where cheekbone. You... It's the jawline. Is that That's what it all. Is? That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's called DNA and genetics, right? But <laughs> so, yeah. well, that's good. So you you made the transition. So then, well, let me. So this is the the question that that pops up in my head is like, okay, which one is better? Is it is one better? Is it better to be in front of the lens and 
you know, having the makeup artist fawning all over you and stylists fixing your clothes and the photographer heaping praise on you or to be behind the camera and being the, the director and controller of everything? Um, but I, gosh, I mean, being made up and all that is so much fun. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say that it wasn't <laughs> enjoyable and wonderful. I mean, it's, it's great to be the canvas, but it was getting to a point where I think at least here, you know, if I, maybe if I had gotten signed and started doing, and let's, let me just go back. I wasn't going to be signed as a fashion model. I was going to be signed as a commercial lifestyle. I would be the mom in the ad with the kid, yeah. like, yeah. you know, um, which is fantastic. But I, lo I lose too much control. I think with that. And um, I've seen you around town. You've been on. You're on billboards in Sacramento, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> yeah. right? Doing that very thing. <laughs> Doing that thing, selling the product, selling the experience. Yeah. Um, and you know, some of my concerns were if I have a business and I'm modeling, am I going to be able to turn down work because I don't like what that image? You know, it's my face. It's like if it's a pharmaceutical company who mm -hmm. hired me and I'm representing some drug that I don't think pairs with my business, mm -hmm. can I say no to that? And it got to be pretty sticky with the things that I would have had legally binding agreements to do oh, with I this agency. I so yeah. um, I just, it was losing too much control of my image. You know, the, mm -hmm. the fun part is still fun, but I think um, my face representing too many things got sticky for me yeah yeah and you're a bit of a nerd too so <laughs> you you on the photographer side of things i know you geek out about cameras and lenses and, and oh, yeah. computers you sent me a picture the other day of a raid array that you just got i mean <laughs> just got it yeah, yeah. You know, you're, the you're new the... camera led to the new imac which led to the new NAS, RAID, I don't know, all of the above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm really not that big a nerd. I actually, those things are my Achilles heel. Yeah. But I'm trying. Like, as my business grows, those things are so important for me. And I have to learn them. Yeah. Even though it doesn't interest me as much as it does a lot of other photographers that, you know, they geek out and they understand that stuff to its core. And I will figure out how to understand it so that I can use it. Yeah. And that's really <laughs> as far as I want to go. Well, that's what a tool is for. I mean, you use the tools uh, as tools, not as objects of desire. And you also uh, you also have kind of an ace in the hole over there because you have your husband that loves this stuff and can can assist you. So you're not you're not yeah. spending all night Googling on which raid should I buy and you know what's this versus that, right? I actually did not decide which brand to buy. He did. I didn't even have to make that decision. So, and you know, but he's, he works for a big company. They have an IT department. He could go ask them. And then it's built in support because they'll just like buy him some beer and they'll come over and help with their like, breaks. Dude, dude, go fix that. Go fix that. <laughs> you know, that's right. what they use. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, I got some built in help. But you know, it's, you wear a lot of hats and I try to be as efficient in all the things to run a business by myself that I can, but it's definitely will take the help where I can get it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right. So are you, are you done modeling completely? Have you shut, have put a padlock on that trunk and moved on or is it still open a little bit? Um, I, I still see value in being photographed for a couple reasons. Um, I think just, I mostly photograph people. I'm a portrait photographer. So keeping kind of in tune with what the people that I photograph are experiencing. The longer I've stayed out of it, the more nervous I've gotten doing it again. And I think that's good to experience because um, I can really help my clients calm down when I just did a photo shoot the week before, say, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I remember how that felt. Yeah. And um, I don't know, like when I first started getting photographed, maybe I'd like one in a hundred images. And now I like, like 50%. That's it, good. The more I get photographed, the less hard I am on myself. Yeah. And I think that is really helpful in photographing people because I understand that their initial reaction may not have anything to do with me and what I did. There's this gradual process in learning how to look at images of yourself and not beat yourself up over it. And that is something that I have, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned about modeling was how to look at an image of myself and be like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're not supposed to do that. 
right. you're supposed to rip it apart mm -hmm. right but mm -hmm. i'm like no that's that's a great image of me i think that's gorgeous yeah well, like, and a lot of it's the photographer that's shooting you as well i mean you know it's it's you, learning to work with a particular ph photographer or photographers there's kind of a symbiosis that goes along there in other words if you're working with a photographer that you just met and you don't really click with the resultant images you know, all things being equal may not be sure. as good as one yeah. that you're like, hey, dude, and you're joking around and, you know, cracking jokes with as you're doing the shoot, right? Um, that's definitely true. I think that being able to work with the same photographers for a couple years, there's a level of comfort that can make more interesting photos um, as you go and, you know, willing to try things, not worrying about if, you know, if this shoot results in nothing, like, Oh, well, yeah, at least we, we had tried, fun. Yeah. you know, um, but I think, you know, it's, there's still, you know, from the beginning, there's a lot of the same photographers in that mix. And I was way harder on myself then, even though it was the same person shooting me than I am now. Yeah. So that lesson and the way that I can talk to my clients and kind of help them not pick themselves apart. I don't know if I would have known how to do that had I never experienced being photographed as much as I was. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all experience. So if you're 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 shining a light on various facets of your experience in the whole photography kind of mm -hmm. ecosystem. Some people like me, you know, I'm I'm not a model and never will be a model, so therefore I will never have that perspective of what it feels like to be behind in front of the camera being photographed and the nervousness and all that sure. stuff. I can deal with it, you know, from to a certain degree, but I can never internalize it as well as somebody that has done it and then has stepped sure. behind the camera. So that's a definite advantage, I think. So I think, you know, that, that kind of parallels when I talk to uh, wedding photographers or female wedding photographers, they say something similar mm -hmm. about how they're able to, you know, without yeah. sounding sexist, they're able to do things that men can't do. Sure. You know, beyond just getting in the room when the bride is dressing and not feeling creepy about it. You know, it's it's other things on a more psychological level. Sure. I mean, whether they've been a bride themselves or not, I think there's still a different connection there mm -hmm. between just having a woman, you know, her mom was a bride. Like, she's been around brides that are either her family or herself. So, yeah, I think there's a, a level of empathy that wedding shooters have, too, that that's an advantage. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Sacramento. So mm -hmm. the, uh, we're both sitting in Sacramento. You're, you're, Sacramento is gigantic. You're a long way away from me, but we're both in the same town, <laughs> rel yeah. relatively speaking, thanks to the internet. Um, but why, why Sacramento? Why do you live in Sacramento? Um, I've been here 10 years now. Um, I can't say that I chose it. I kind of ended up here. Uh -huh. um, you were a vagrant and you just kind of blew into town one I day? Was, <laughs> I was living I was living in Tahoe. I was still in college or just about to graduate. And Ryan, my husband, his job was here. And he proposed and we got married. And his job won. So I came here. Mm -hmm. um, I hated it at first. I was living in South Lake Tahoe. I mean, going anywhere from there was just like impossible yeah um but over the years this has really become home i mean i i hear it all the time it's like i travel i go other places and i'm always happy to come back um that's funny that's what you know, i interviewed tim ingle he said almost the same thing verbatim oh really yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Still fine. yeah no it's it's easy place to live it's easy to get around um it's getting more crowded but it's yeah, I mean, especially after this interview series, I think, you know, it's, you know, and I, I think I might be an example or a core sample of the type of person that might relocate to a city like Sacramento versus down south in the Bay Area. And it's, for me, yeah, it's it's about cost. Obviously, it's much cheaper mm -hmm. up here. It's definitely much cheaper, uh, still expensive comparatively, but it's still much cheaper yeah. in this we area. We are still in California. So. You're still in California, <laughs> so yeah, don't get it twisted. But at the same time, the what, one of the main things that drew me here, and as I was having this conversation with my real estate agent, was you know I gave him some very broad stroke parameters. So I was like, hey, I want I want a metropolitan area with a vibrant kind of, you know, 
restaurant, not so much, I'm mm-hmm. not that much of a clubber, but, you know, this kind of restaurants and nightlife and that kind yeah. of thing. Um, in culture, I also would like uh, close proximity to an airport because I tend to fly a lot. I want to be able to get in and out without mm. having to suffer bookends of traffic on either side and, you know, a, a list of other things like that. And most arrows pointed to this area. Right? And honestly, I had never considered Sacramento at all. I know people still think we're a cow town. I don't even know what that comes from historically. Like, yeah. I mean, I know there's agriculture here, but we've been the state capital well, for most people time. from outside of California <laughs> that don't know geography will say San Francisco or L.A. is the state yeah. capital, right? And I would say San Francisco is kind of de facto the state capital, right? Yeah. Even though Sacramento is. And there's a whole story behind why Sacramento is the state capital. The gold rush and all that stuff was kind mm-hmm. of centered around this area. So, yeah, it's just it's interesting. And it, it, it's just weird that I had never even considered it. I don't know why I never considered it. I just, in my head, I just like yeah. Sacramento. That's a drive through town. You never go, you're not going to stop there, you know. I mean, and I, I felt the same way if I hadn't kind of ended up here. It wasn't anywhere I ever thought to myself, yeah, I'm going to live there when I, you know, settle down and have a house and a family. Like, not not on my radar, but I got drawn here somehow and... And I'm pretty happy it worked out that way. Right, yeah. And then the the other surprise for me was the photographic community and how, like we, we talked about in the beginning there, how vibrant and how, mm-hmm. many, how many photographers and models and makeup artists and places to shoot. <laughs> you know, it's just, it is yeah. it's crazy. And it's, I mean, the creative community in Sacramento, for the majority of the time, you know, they're they're there to help each other. And there's not a lot of, negative vibes between everyone like everyone's pretty cool they're doing their thing they yeah. want to help you do your thing um yeah it's pretty yeah, I chill. Don't know. it's pretty chill now you mentioned you so there, like i just said there's a lot of places to shoot around here what are some of your favorite places to shoot i'm right now i'm sitting literally across the street from the from the capitol park mm-hmm. in, in the capitol building and every time you know Usually almost every day or every other day, I'll go hang out in the park or whatever. And I'm always, especially on weekends, uh, there's yeah. brides, there's weddings, yeah. there's quinceañeras, there's all kinds of stuff. There's always a photographer there with a crew and lots of people dressed up. <laughs> you know? Is right. That, is yeah. the park one of your, your places to go or do you have hidden nooks and crannies? I don't go to the park for the exact reason <laughs> you just outlined. <laughs> because of that. That's why I don't go <laughs> Um, but you know, well, now we're the farm to fork capital, but up until six months ago, we were the city of trees. And what does that mean? So the farm to fork capital means they changed the sign on the water tower as you drive into town. Yeah. Our tagline, (laughs) the the city's tagline has changed. Okay. Some people are super mad about it. Some of It's farm to fork instead of what? What was it? City of trees. City of trees. Okay. City of trees. Got it. So, I mean... The, the Capitol Gardens are beautiful. They're well-maintained, lush and green most of the year. But um, it's a very overgrown city. Like, the trees are very mature in most places. So mm-hmm. I tried to just go find a cool alley or something off the beaten path that is hard to figure out where you are. Yeah, it could um, be any city USA, right? Y- yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I... Aside from a couple places at the Capitol, like there's a big marble archway, um, or if I if I'm shooting for a politician and it has to be something recognizable as Sacramento, mm-hmm. um, which would be the Capitol or the Tower Bridge, or which is our big like that gold bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I try to make it more nondescript than that if I if it's a private client. Mm-hmm. Um, Love it. Yeah, the politicians are the only ones that, or maybe some real estate agents, they want it to be Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Um, Otherwise, I just, you know, sac- Old Town has got lots of exposed brick and, like, crumbling stuff. There's lots of texture. There's lots of – there's tall enough buildings to get shade at all hours of the day, yeah. um, you know, in narrow alleyways. So you can definitely get that vibe downtown. And then we're, what, 10 minutes from being kind of out in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. 20 minutes. You can – head up towards Tahoe, be in the pine trees, be in an open field. Um, so you can get 
urban environments, you can get kind of sweeping landscapes and yep. you head over to a ride. vineyard you can get vineyard shots of get roll, rolling hills covered in vines mm -hmm. all that stuff yeah so i mean i'd say with within 45 minutes in any direction you can get totally different landscapes to shoot yeah so cool that's that's pretty nice yeah there's a lot of variety everyone's out shooting the sunflowers right now we've got all the sunflower fields I need to you get know, out there. Those, I need to get I out there. I think they're dying. I think my, 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 uh, my drone wants to go get some aerials of those sunflowers. <laughs> I think that's, that's next. Okay, yeah. so, so you mentioned like popping around and doing the archways and stuff for real estate agents and politicians, et cetera. Um, any trends in other sorts of patterns you've seen that people are requesting in, in your work? Yeah. So I don't know how much we've touched on this. We've touched on it on other TWIP episodes. My foundation was really in doing family photography, portraits mm -hmm. um, of kids and families and stuff like that. And in the last six months, my clientele basically has completely done a 180. I have no more families. I have all corporate and commercial clients. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that is that the corporate world their marketing they want it to look like a family portrait as yeah. far as style you know obviously not kids and families but um they're not interested in buying a stock image they want something that's natural and authentic and i've heard that now from a couple photographers in town that you know their client list is changing yeah. and they're getting work based on this you know really interactive portrait experience that they were doing for um, family clients that now businesses want that because it looks more authentic. That's what they want to put on their website. They want, they don't want their clients to know that they bought this photo and it looks super polished and perfect. It's like, no, the lighting wasn't right. It was a bunch of shadows, but we don't care. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Reality, so right? We want reality. We want to show an authentic experience. So, like, natural headshot or natural image, like, that's the buzzword. I, that's what everyone is saying. It's all of my clients, everyone I'm submitting estimates for, that's what they're looking for. Really? So no more, no more gray, seamless paper with the uh, three-quarter turn and the <laughs> hand on the chin looking at the camera? No. <laughs> I mean, there are still people doing it, but I feel like I, I think it could get to a point where what I'm doing is going to start taking away from that if they don't change what they're doing. Well, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's a sine wave, right? I mean, there's trends that mm -hmm. ebb and flow and, and the zeitgeist of what people think is cool changes yeah. over over the years, which is good. Keeps it fresh, right? It does. And, you know, and I hope that I can continue following those trends. You know, I think what I've done is kind of shifted. I didn't have a really straight road when I planned what my photography career was gonna look like it's been everywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's good or bad um you're sailing but, you're just you're zigzagging just, you're just sailing going. <laughs> as long as you like, keep oh, forward momentum you're good <laughs> this engineering firm wants to hire me to help with their branding okay that sounds awesome um <laughs> but it's hard too because what they expect and what you know family of four expects and how you treat them um, has that has had its own learning curve trying oh, to figure right. out like how to deal with how they want to be treated I guess you mm. know it's like I can't talk to a mom the way I talk to a director of marketing mm. it doesn't go over the same and vice versa yeah even if the director of marketing is a mom they're in director of marketing mode when they're, <laughs> when right. they're like, not in mom mode right you know negotiating with a, with a family um I, I almost can't treat my business like a business. I have to treat them like they're a friend. Mm -hmm. um, because when I treat them the, like they're my business, I would get just like really bad response. Mm -hmm. And then now that I'm dealing with corporate people, I've had to bust out my negotiating skills and like be a little bit more of a hard ass. And, and that's gotten me farther than like, oh, well, yeah, let's see what we can do, you know. Yeah. 
So yeah, being nice never doesn't really get people. I mean, you want to be nice, and but at the same time, there's a there's that line between business and being personal. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. depending on who you're dealing with, they may take your niceness as a weakness and take advantage of you. Right. So you gotta, you gotta be nice, but firm but at firm. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've had to figure out what things to be firm about and like, you know, what the value of my work actually is. And, um, I actually think I've done better negotiating with corporations than I was with families because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but it's for the director of marketing, it's just business. It's you just can, business you know, be more legit about what you can and can't do with them. And they'll either hire you or they won't. And even I get less offended when they don't hire me as opposed to a family because that you have to make it so much personal, more personal for those clients. So it's been an interesting transition. (laughs) How do you handle the question both from the moms and pops and also the directors of marketing and politicians and real estate agents? Mm -hmm. The question of, hey, I want to hire you. How much how much does it cost? (laughs) What what do you say? Because we all get that, right? Yeah, I think the thing that I have learned, I was really bad at this, probably up until the beginning of this year when I decided I had to get better at business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I quit my job, I started doing photography, and I was just flying around with my camera, like, hoping for things to happen. Shotgun. Um, yeah. And I've had to decide to get better at running a business yeah. for my own sake. And so, you know, you have to know how much it costs you to go do a photo shoot, regardless of who it's for. Like, what is your bottom line? You can't make it up for every person. Like, your costs are your costs. So having to figure that out was something that I had never taken the time to do before. So I know if I leave the house with my basic kit, it's going to cost me this much. Yeah. So why would I charge someone less than that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because in in the (laughs) end, if you do that, if you cheat yourself, you're not really cheating yourself, but if you under undervalue your services or... Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you're, you're, it's a psychological thing on you. Cause when you go out, you're just in the back of your head. I'm not really getting, I'm not making any money on this anyway. So why should I, you know, but if you feel like you're adequately compensated and no matter what you're, you know, you're in the green, then it it kind of, you know, subconsciously changes your mindset about shooting. You, do you agree with that? Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, I feel like I didn't even know I was being underpaid because I didn't understand my overhead and my costs. Yep. Yep. Um, so figuring that out has changed how I answer that question Mm -hmm. because, you know, what I charge someone for my time shouldn't change. I don't think, but the type of client may dictate different usage, different ways they're going to use the image. You know, if I'm going to shoot a family and they're going to put a 16 by 20 in their house, or I'm going to shoot for a company who's going to use all those images for the web or for a a billboard or for a magazine ad. My time and my costs shouldn't change for either of those. Mm -hmm. Where the sliding scale is, is how they're using them. Usage. Yeah. Licensing. So like learning all of this stuff has been, uh, it's actually been really fun. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the way that I value my time now helps me, not try to, I used to try to figure it out for every single person differently. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Based on what criterion? Like, wait, what are they driving? Is it a BMW or is it a Prius? Oh, let me bring out the Prius price list. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like I had my family price list and, you know, I'd never shot weddings, so I didn't have to worry about that. But I always kind of had to have an idea of what it would be because people would still ask me to do it. And it was just this moving target all the time. All the time. So finally coming up with like, okay, this is my base price. So then I tell people when they say, how much do you charge? Well, I start at $1,200 a day Mm -hmm. and let's talk about what your needs are and we go from there. Yeah. So I at least try to give them a base and then I can judge that reaction. Now, is that base the same for the mom and pop that wants the, the 16 by 20 as the same as, say, some corporation, you know, like Apple calls you up do, and they say, yeah, we need you to work on this ad campaign with us. and We'd love to work with you. Do you give them the $1,200 day rate? In theory, 
Yes, mm -hmm. because then their usage would be a percentage of either their media buy or you know some crazy usage. Got it. So you know my twelve hundred dollar creative fee for my time for whatever however much time they want will be I will be paid on top of that for mm -hmm. whatever. So if somebody wants, somebody watching this and they want to hire Christine the photographer, you have a, a rate that everyone's going to pay to get you to shoot, you know, for the I mean, day. And then on top of that, depending on usage, that's where it, it'll either be more if they right. want, if, yeah, this is going to be used in a commercial or in Times Square mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, on the web or whatever in advertising versus personal use. I'm just going to put it on my Facebook page right. and in the living room, right? That's my, this is my current working theory. This is something I'm trying <laughs> because I've, I've not sounds, landed, sounds valid. <laughs> I've not landed on something that I feel like I've been really happy with. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of business experience otherwise and running anything by myself. So, um, I just kind of keep changing it until, That's cool. until I feel confident putting it out there. Yeah. Like, you know, the whole moving target thing, I always was second guessing myself. So I feel more confident with this structure and this way of doing it than I have with anything else that I've done. So, you know, I'm my own boss. I'll try it for a while. And if I don't like it, I'll try something else. I love it. I love it. That's that's called life, right? That's, yeah. Well, that's the way smart people operate life. So, so the the I would say the not so smart people operate life as they find something. It's kind of working. They just stick with it until they die. Versus changing, yeah. you know, and like, hey, maybe if I did this, it might be a little bit yeah. better. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try this. Yeah. Let me try. This. Yeah, I might try things a little too much. I should probably have a longer test period. But <laughs> this is this model is working for me. I think the hardest thing about it is um, competing with photographers who haven't figured that out now. Yeah. Um, yeah. For example, I just had to submit an estimate. The marketing director is not in marketing by trade. He um, had worked for the company for a long time and ended up in it. Had no idea what it meant to license an image for their branding for website use and for printing for promotional use. Oh. So I was competing with photographers that were uh, back east. You know, that's a nationwide company. They weren't charging any sort of licensing fee. So he comes back and is like, well, I'm not sure what, what this licensing fee is. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Uh, so now I have to figure out how to justify it, how to explain it. You know, and how that, to... that's tough, right? Because, mm -hmm. because it's education. You want to educate them. And then at yeah. some point putting on my marketing director hat, right? At some point it becomes price-based because, you know, right. if, if I'm not savvy about photography and say I'm not, you know, I'm not sold on your work, right? You're, right. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not, I'm not hiring Annie Leibovitz, you know, and she can dictate prices. Right. You know, it becomes a commodity and it, mm -hmm. and it basically becomes an equation. How much do I have in my budget for this? Yep. And and then your dance becomes: Do I educate them and and, and get my licensing right. fee, or do I give the job up and stand by my guns and let this East right. Coaster take it? And <laughs> you know, no offense, East Coasters. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a photographer on each coast for this company, so the East yeah. Coast guy has it. I was able because I was figuring out my value and how that worked. You know, instead of them going, well, this is our budget. Can you do it for that? I didn't go, oh, yeah, I'll match it. I went, I can match it, but it's going to change the term. So instead of doing a five-year license, I did a three-year. Oh, okay. So I was able to say, yeah, yeah, I hear true. you. I can negotiate with you. Here's how we can change it to fit your budget, which I think shows that I understand my value. I can change my price. But if I had just gone, yeah, sure, I'll lower my price. What does that say about what I'm charging? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that goes for not just what you're doing, but it goes for like TWIP, like, twip advertising. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. the same, it's the same kind of, you know, obviously with some different, some different knobs to turn, but it's the same kind mm -hmm. of conversation, right? If mm -hmm. you're having a conversation with an advertiser that you, that is not savvy about podcasting. And so there's that level of education and then mm -hmm. you know if, if there's a lot of podcasts that people can advertise on so do you want to give it up or do you want to stick to your guns do you want to lower your price yeah. and if you feel like you want to lower your price how do you lower your price without it looking like you're lowering your exactly. price and right. devaluing you know the, exactly. the the service itself so and it's it's tricky mm -hmm. um 
It's kind of like what I tell people when they're doing friends and family work, which I try to avoid, but we all have to do it. But, you know, if someone asks you to shoot a wedding for free, like my sister is getting married soon, and she she didn't even ask me. She told me I was shooting her wedding. <laughs> She told me, I'm the younger brother, so, you know, she told me I was shooting the wedding, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoice her, but I'm going to, you know, give her credit for 100% on it, just so that, not that I'm trying to, you know, pull anything fast, but I just want, I don't want my work to be undervalued. I want people to know that, oh, this is, this is what this would really would have cost us if we had gone somewhere else and he's doing it for free, you know, and I'll do the same exact service level that I would have done for anyone else. For her, right. treat her just like a normal client, but yep. it, there will just be no money attached to it. So, yeah, and hopefully, I'll get a good, you know, home cooked meal out of it or something. I was gonna say, <laughs> hopefully, they feed you because you know, sometimes those wedding photographers they don't get a meal. Yeah, yeah that's why you keep those power bars in your camera bag. <laughs> I love it. Well, Christine, thanks for taking the time to do this. It's, uh, it's been my pleasure. Educational yeah. talking to my fellow Sacramentan. Is that what we call people that are from Sacramento? Sacramentans. Sure. I don't know. That sounds good. <laughs> I was I was gonna go with sacramentals, but that didn't sound. Oh, right. I don't like that. No, I like the other one. <laughs> You're a sacramental. Maybe that happens Friday nights. I don't know. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks for coming on, Christine. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Peace.